One, two, three. Uh, how you doing? This is the uh, best of the week, guys. We have Christopher from Shoe Pedals out in Connecticut. Um, really quick, you guys have a killer website, uh, killer pedal designs. Uh, they sound amazing. And uh, a real quick quote from your website, uh, little interest in cloning other pedals. Uh, I think that's, <laughs> that's the uh, yeah. I think that's the coolest quote I've read in a, um, you know on a website lately. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I turned out to. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, pretty much, man. Go for it. Tell us everything about you. Sure. So um, we've been making pedals for um, close to ten years now, maybe nine years. Um, I started when I was in uh, grad school at NYU, so I was living in Brooklyn at the time. And um, uh, I lived around the corner from like a, the local guitar shop, and I used to hang out there and stuff. And uh, so I was kind of like I would go get coffee across the street, and I'd go to the guitar shop and like probably annoy the owner. <laughs> but then I like made friends with like uh, the luthier and the people that worked there and stuff. So I used to hang out there quite a bit. And uh, after a while, I was like, kind of, yeah, I didn't have a whole lot of money because this was like during the whole uh, financial crisis thing, yeah. too. So, like, uh, just to set the scene, like, there's like Occupy Wall Street was going on in the city at the time, too. And there's like people literally marching in the street and everything. Um, so, you know, I, I didn't have a lot of money as a grad student. So I was like, well, I still want to buy pedals, but <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. really have that much money. So what if I just like learn to make them, right? <laughs> so uh, yeah, like for the similar reasons, I started to learn to like fix my guitars and stuff a lot more at the time too, because I was like, you know, um, let's save some money and just do do it ourselves. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. So I, uh, go ahead. Yeah. No, yeah, exactly. We, I love yeah. that stuff. Yeah, so um, the, the summer before that, I think before I went back to grad school, I had been like a community college teacher before that because I went to school for English and I was teaching English. Um, I had made a Telecaster with my dad and that was kind of like my first foray into guitar wiring and i so i was like well i was able to wire that guitar how, how much worse could pedals be and it's yeah, like well sure. yeah actually a lot worse <laughs> but um so i had been playing with um a pedal at the time called the wolf computer by mellow tone and I, I don't know if that's like a well-known i know that pedal uh yeah, yeah it's, my it's uh, like my xbox wild. handle has uh has been wolf computer boy since like 2007 really? <laughs> uh because i thought that pedal was so cool the name was so cool <laughs> yeah so that so i started out and i i asked the guy if he could send me the schematic because i wanted to make some pedals and like you know make some for friends and stuff um because i had some friends actually from high school who were still uh who were living in brooklyn at the time that i was too so uh, we used to have a band actually in high school the guy that was living there so i wanted to make make him a pedal and make a pedal so he sent me the schematic for it so i started out uh, the first one I made was I, I tried to clone the Wolf computer, mm -hmm. uh, which, well, I guess that goes against my mission statement, doesn't it? But <laughs> you have to start somewhere. Yeah, of course. So of like, course. I was like, okay, this is going to be the first pedal that I make. I'm going to see if this works. And so I sat there and I soldered the thing for like, I think like eight hours straight because I like didn't super know what I was doing right <laughs> I had like a, a soldering iron from like Radio Shack and like I bought parts in Radio Shack that was around the corner from NYU after class and like um, I got some enclosures online and so I just I made the thing and it, it did work I was like man there's a lot of things I would like to change about this right so like like, I didn't super like the control ranges, and, like, I was like, oh, what if it's had, like, a tone control, or what if it had, um, like, you know how that pedal oscillates? Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to do a system where you could, like, press a momentary switch and have a different oscillation that you tune to do, like, that crazy stuff, and then, like, release it and just go back to your normal fuzz tone. So I was like, well, that'd be cool. Um, so I just started modifying it, modifying it until I made it like my own thing. And that became the silver apple pedal, which was my first pedal, um, which is like my most complex pedal still. Kind of. <laughs> so it's kind of funny that that's the first one. Um, but then, um, so yeah, so I brought 
like my prototype down to the guitar shop that was around the corner and like uh i it, i it was like a blank box and i just started labeling it with sharpie and then so like i wrote the name on it and i, I named it after the album silver apples of the moon by um oh sorry there's a album silver apples of the moon but a band called silver apples that named themselves after that um they were like a psychedelic band and they had this song called oscillations mm -hmm. and i was like okay it's an oscillating fuzz i'll call it the silver apple oscillating fuzz right so um brought that down there and i like well, in the shop wrote in sharpie on it and like and then i wrote for the foot switch shoe with an arrow because that's where you put your shoe mm -hmm. right <laughs> and so that's how they um they started so i i brought it down there and and people liked it and so i made some more and and we sold them in the store um on commission so i was like look you don't have to pay me anything if it doesn't sell right so yeah he's like okay you can have that spot on the shelf <laughs> <laughs> right so and then people started buying them you know it was like the right time and place for it i guess because like brooklyn everybody's sort of like into experimental stuff yeah, of course. And, um yeah so then the second pedal i made after that was the pixel which i made by breaking the silver apple on mm -hmm. purpose like i just like haphazardly put a extra transistor in there and i modified it until it started working again yeah and then I, that's sort of like my nintendo sounding fuzz <laughs> yeah. um, i guess you'd call it a fuzz it's it's sort of like almost borderline not a fuzz i guess um so those were the first two and then i just kept experimenting and like pretty much every day i'd bring something to the shop and be like what do you guys think about this and you know like there was like when i brought the pixel in, there was this guy there he was like that sounds horrible <laughs> and then there was another guy there that was like that sounds amazing <laughs> so it's sort of a divisive one yeah <laughs> it knows how subjective it is right yeah yeah well like yeah it's like totally it's interesting with pedals like i find that sometimes I'll give a pedal that sounds great in like somebody's hands to someone else who's maybe not super familiar with like especially fuzz pedals and they just like kind of play whatever they were gonna play into the pedal and it just doesn't work at all mm -hmm. like there's like that learning curve where you have to sort of play the pedal you know, yeah. as an instrument sort of yeah. or like play at least change what you're playing so that it works with it and then you'll get something interesting and new but like I think sometimes people are are like all right i'm gonna play the same you know big open chord on this and it's gonna sound terrible you know and they're like oh that's that's awful i don't like pedals <laughs> yeah that's a, that's a perfect reason right there just to like yeah. uh, uh buy as many pedals as you can and guitars yeah. as you can because not every guitar <laughs> is going to sound the same with every pedal and amp and vice versa and yeah that's where the addiction comes in right yeah yeah so uh so that's kind of how things started it it just started it kept going um so i was at the shop one day and um i was hanging out with my friend there his name was domingos he was the luthier at the shop and he was like super talented guy actually he used to build like guitars out of like one giant piece of wood like yeah. he'd just carve it out oh wow and it was like all like not even neck through like a whole body everything one piece right yeah wow um yeah so uh he was like working on some guitar in the back and the owner had like stepped out for something or other and i like i see this guy come in and i'm like this guy looks kind of familiar and he's just sort of like playing around with stuff and i'm like hmm, where have i seen him before right and and so like after a while it dawns on me that i think this is the guy from one of my favorite bands deer hoof he's oh, he's yeah. a drummer from that band and i'm like so he he comes up and he wants to buy a, a, a drum key and there's like nobody <laughs> in the shop right and he's like yeah i have a show tonight or something uh oh actually no before that i asked him like are you in a band and he's like yeah i was like is it dear he's like you've heard of us <laughs> <laughs> so he was like excited <laughs> but they're you know they're an indie band so yeah. i don't know they were they were you know, probably big in brooklyn um uh and in, in my mind <laughs> um so uh so i sold him this guitar key i didn't work with this shop <laughs> yeah i was like uh domingo so what do i do he's like uh just five bucks whatever or whatever it was two dollars i don't know <laughs> yeah. 
And so I sold them the thing, and then later on, I'm like, wait a minute, I have this pedal thing going on. I should probably have mentioned that to him. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> so I sent yeah, him an email later and was like, hey, I, you know, I'm making these pedals now, and I'm a big fan of the band. Can I like give you some pedals? And they were like, sure, sure, cool. And so I sent them some pedals, and then they ended up using them on their next album. And oh. that sort of like kicked stuff off for me. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they've been super nice to me. And we, you know, uh, whenever they have shows in the area, when when we were doing live shows, we yeah. would uh, try to go to the show and we'd hang out a bit after the show and I'd exchange the latest pedals and stuff and give me some free music and things like that. So, cool. awesome. my best uh, customer, I'd say. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, that's kind of how things got started. And then uh, the pedals just kept evolving. I kept uh, experimenting, making new pedals, um, and the funny thing is, I didn't go to school for <laughs> electrical engineering yeah, at all. Sure. Yeah, I'm an English teacher, so or was an English teacher. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're intentionally not basing pedals on you know previous pedals, cause that's that's a huge thing in the pedal world, right? Is you know take something yeah. that already exists and you clone it, change one thing, call it your own. How do you, yeah. how are you coming up with your new designs nowadays? Um. Well, nowadays, I, I just kind of base it on, like, my electrical engineering knowledge. Yep. Um, so over time, I, I um, learned more and more about the actual, like, how stuff worked and the physics of it and everything. And um, so now I kind of, like, sometimes it'll start with, like, I have an idea that's sort of like an engineering idea. Like, what if I do this? Will that work? Or, you know? Yeah. Um, and then I try it out, and sometimes it sounds terrible, and I don't do anything with it. And sometimes it sounds really cool. Um, yeah. So these days, what I usually do is I, I'll like have an idea and simulate it in um, a circuit simulation program and see what comes out. And I was like, "Well, oh, that looks interesting. Let's hear see what it sounds like." You know. Right. So that's how I do some of it. Um, but initially it was a lot of just experimentation like sort of mad scientist type stuff like yeah. um like uh, okay i'll change or, or like you know there's certain basic principles that are in every pedal right kind of but well not every pedal but most of them and in all electronics right so it's like okay well what if i combine this thing with that thing from this other you know like so it's sort of like building blocks like a classic gain stage and like well, what if i put an octave between that and something else you know and like or what if i put octave in, in some sort of feedback loop or, or something or you know um um so it's it, yeah it's, it's a lot it's kind of half theory half trial and error like you know, sometimes things are going to look good on paper and they actually don't sound good. So, yeah. um, you end up tweaking them, uh, until they do sound good or <laughs> you know, things like that. Um, but yeah, like originally, like some of them were just like, um, uh, let's just experiment and see what, what happens if I connect this to that, you know, yeah. <laughs> that kind of thing. Or like that, that's, that doesn't look like something I've seen before. Why not? <laughs> Sometimes I find out why not. <laughs> um, a couple of years ago, you did a, um, the, a pedal with DOD, right? So you yeah. just pedal and they manufactured it. That was the looking, yeah. Book, correct? Yeah. So how yeah. Did that collaboration come about? So that was interesting. So at the time, um, well, okay, I think a couple of years before that, there was a forum called Harmony Central that we were all on. Oh, yeah. Like a lot of guitarists and stuff, and uh, eventually kind of died. But <laughs> at the time, there was this um, community project to design a pedal, right? So um, we had one guy do the graphics, and someone did the circuit boards, and then I designed the circuit for it. Uh, and that was called the Octophant, which was, um, I had a pedal at the time called the Elephant, and uh, I added an octave sort of to that, and Octophant, right? So, plus that would be a cool graphic, right? Like, it's like an octopus-elephant combination yeah. thing, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we made that, um, and then, like, so that was kind of interesting, because I had never done something on, like, a huge scale like this before, and so, like, it was about four or five of us were going to make the pedal, and I think I, I made, like, half of them or something. And we made a few hundred of them, I think. 
Um, and I think I ended up making 50 something of them, right? Um, so I was like, oh, this is a huge undertaking, right? And I, so I built the thing. And one of my, the people, we split up the list of like people who would make pedals for who. And the one, one of the people on mine was Tom Cram, who's the head of Digitech and DoD at the time. Yeah. And so I sent him this pedal and he sent me an email back like, wow, it's like, this is really cool and well made and stuff. And we started talking about doing collaborations because they were doing a collaboration with Black Arts Toneworks, I think, first. Um, they were like, do you want to do one with your brand? And I was like, sure. So um, I ended up designing that pedal. And the idea for that one was to take um, sort of the concept of the Savior Machine, but make it more mass producible and, and just like different. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's it's got some lineage with the Savior Machine. Um, the, the story behind the Savior Machine is that I didn't like any of the overdrive pedals I had. So I just like... Play, made something until I liked it, basically, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for myself. And I was like, mm, yeah, probably other people would like this. <laughs> what, what were you trying to key in with that pedal? Like, what were you looking for that was different that you couldn't get somewhere else? Well, so I wanted it to be very touch sensitive. So, like, I wanted it to really feel like the front of, end of an amp. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I was just like, I was trying all these overdrive pedals and I'm like, oh, they all kind of sound the same, which they were probably like all based on two screamers or something. Yeah. So uh, I was like, I don't know, like this, this whole type of thing doesn't seem to be working for me. It's sort of like kind of felt a little constrained, a little stodgy and not, not super dynamic. Right. Um, and, and I also didn't like the decay, too. Like, when some of those pedals decay, they kind of do this fizzly thing and like do weird artifacts and stuff. Um, so I wanted it to sound good when you, the note rings out. Um, and like an amp does, like, it kind of smoothly decays when usually, you know. Um, and it's got sort of an envelope to the tack when you play a real amp that's breaking up. Like, it kind of gets brighter and then gets sort of a little bit darker as it... Um, decay. So I wanted to capture all that stuff, and um, I wound up with a design that was like you know just totally different, basically. Um, and there's no no op amps in it and stuff, and so it's totally unrelated to, <laughs> to Screamer and stuff. But um, it's uh, based on three different FETs actually, and um, and so I got that sounding good finally, and I was like, okay, yeah, and. Um, so we adapted a similar principle for the um, the looking glass, but with uh, some different controls. It has the input filter, uh, has different um, like voicing, uh, different control ranges, and uh, it's got different gain ranges and different transistors. And so, so there's a lot that's different about it, but similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Understand. Um, so, are you is shoe pedal still a one man show, or do you have a, a staff that's working for you at all? Or um, it's mostly me, but I do have uh, let's see, how should we call her assistant? I guess apprentice. <laughs> uh, uh, my friend Angie has started helping uh, to build stuff recently. Awesome. So, um, oh, shout out to Angie. And that's been going really well. Yep. What's that? Yeah. Shout out to Angie. Yeah, yeah, I think you guys talked to her first, probably. Yeah, yeah she helped set this um, thing up. She, she uh, prompted me <laughs> to make an Instagram account finally after 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> um, I probably should have thought of that first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, um, I, gotta, I gotta ask you, uh, so this is a show about uh, Craigslist, right? I'm sure you've, uh, you play guitar, <laughs> you're a guitar guy. Uh, what's yeah. your best score on Craigslist? Um, probably my Les Paul, hey. uh, which is, so I haven't actually done a whole lot on Craigslist. I mostly stick to like reverb and like eBay back in the end, also forums, but, sure. but like, <laughs> um, yeah, I got this Les Paul light for, which is like, I think it's like filled with balsa wood or something from the nineties. Right. And, uh, I got it in a. Uh, parking lot of stop and shop as, <laughs> as usual with Craigslist. Um, yeah. And it's like one of the best list balls I've ever played. Uh, <laughs> and it was like, you know, I think it was 500 or $600. It was, it was pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good you can't beat that. Nice. Yeah. yeah, you can't beat that. 
I felt kind of guilty though, because the guy, like, I met the guy, and he's like, "Yeah, this is like the best Paul, Les Paul I've ever played," and I was like, "But I just need to pay my lawyer." <laughs> hey, yeah, what are you gonna do? That's what Craigslist is for, man. You sure you want to sell this? And he's like, "Yeah, no, no, I, I really." I need to pay this lawyer. So I was like, "Okay, so yeah, yeah. I got that." And it's actually my only uh, Les Paul, so yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, what I'm curious, what was your first guitar pedal? The first one I ever made or first one I ever bought? First one you ever bought. What was the what was the one that got you into this whole thing? Um, so it was uh the purple boss flanger, the BF two. Yeah. Uh, which yeah. I still have. And I, I at the time um I like convinced my bandmate to split it with me. So we, we like I think we each put in 40 bucks or something at, like, Sam Ash, right? Mm -hmm. This was, like, high school, I think. I was like, yeah, this will be really cool, because I was listening to um, Smashing Pumpkins at the time, and they had this song called Love on Melancholy, which is, like, all flanger. I was like, yeah, I want that sound. So this was, like, late 90s, right? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so I got it, and, like, we were able to do that and stuff, and then I was like, yeah, that's kind of the only thing it does, isn't it? <laughs> yep. So it's funny, I don't really use Flanders very much at all now, oh, <laughs> but that was the first one. And then, uh, he, well, he, we were, had like a bit of an argument because he wanted to get a Wawa. Yeah. And oh. then he ended up getting a Wawa later, and he was kind of like, screw you <laughs> about it. No, it was, it was cool, yeah. So how, how many pedals is Shoe currently making in a year? Uh, you know, what what's mm. it like? That's a good question. I don't necessarily keep track like of that just like off the top of my head but i mean i make a few a week so i guess probably um maybe a, a, between 100 and 200 something like that awesome. that's great and yeah. what's what's next for shoe pals what's the next big thing that people should look out for um well i do have another collaboration coming up that i can't really say much about unfortunately Perfect. but that yeah should be coming out next year um recently i also did a collabor another collaboration with tom um from dod he has his own company now called spiral electric effects so we, we recently did um a pedal called the red uh spiral okay which is out now and that's really cool um that's i think it might be my best overdrive design personally it's, it's really cool mm -hmm. um so that's out now um but yeah i've been saying for years i'd also like to make some modulation pedals because most of mine are they're all they're all based on some sort of mangling of gain or octave and sure. stuff like that so uh, i have an idea for a phaser that i'd like to do um We'll see if it happens. I've made some modulation pedals before and uh, never released them because I was like, well, it's not really better than whatever's out there. Yeah, you know? that's, <laughs> gotcha. like, that, that's one thing that happens to me uh, a lot. Like, I, I don't really want to put something out that I don't think is going to like contribute to the conversation, so to mm -hmm. speak, of pedals. Like, so like, if it's not something that I think is better or, or more interesting or at least different from something else that's out there. I usually just don't release it because I'm like, mm. yeah. yeah, what for? Good for you. Yeah, yeah that, that's very responsible. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I try not to be boring. We uh, we ready for speed round? Is it that time? Hey, all right, <laughs> all right. Um, so we're just I'm just gonna give you a couple things, two choices, and let's kind of you know. A lot of guitar players have different opinions and all this stuff, so we want to kind of see where you land. Number one, Strat or Telly? Hmm, Strat, because I can modify the crap out of them. And yeah. That's, yeah. There you go. There yeah. you go. I'm a Strat man myself. Fender or Marshall? Uh, Fender, for sure, because I like to have a more neutral platform to do all kinds of pedal stuff with. Nice. And I love the reverb also. Yeah, that, that helps. Yeah. Um, are you a coffee or a tea man? Uh, both. I drink coffee in the morning and tea in the afternoon. Nice. Cause it's, <laughs> there you go. I try to I try to limit the amount of sugar from the, <laughs> the coffee. There you go. Right? Um, this one I don't know where you're gonna land here. If you had to pick one, tube screamer or blues breaker? Oh, um, 
I'd say Blues Breaker because I really don't like Dreamers. <laughs> they're, they're, too, they're too MIDI for me, I think. Yeah. Understood. Um, yeah. You prefer digital stuff or analog stuff? Um, I'd say analog, but I do like kind of a hybrid. So, um, like when I record, for example, I use a lot of analog gear and like uh, rack stuff but I record digitally. I don't have a tape machine. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my pedal board's kind of similar. It's like half uh, analog, like for distortion and things like that. And then the back end is sort of is digital. So I have like a, a deco on there for my like tape flanging type effect. And then um, I have, you know, digital delays and stuff mostly. So yeah. I, like, I like analog gain and digital delay usually. Yeah, yeah. makes sense. That deco is a nice pedal, by the way. Yeah, so uh, one of the only ones I have two of, because it's... Well, actually, that was an interesting story, because I was like, you know, the, it's like kind of got this randomness to it. I was like, well, I wonder what happens if you have two of them. Do they sync up? Like, or, like, is it really random, you know? So I, <laughs> I should do a video about this. Like, <laughs> So, like, I powered them both up, and, like, yeah, they, they don't do the same thing. So I don't know what they're doing in there, but... Random number generator. We'll see. Uh, maple or rosewood? Um, I like both, but you, I guess I prefer rosewood. Um, I, I like it a little less snappy, but I do like the feel of maple. So um, I have a mix. Uh, are you a Les Paul or SG man? It's definitely a Les Paul. I actually, SG is actually one of my least favorite guitars. Because for some reason I can never play them in tune. Like I don't know if it's they're like too thin or something, or like, or I don't know. Like I, I, maybe my touch is too hard, but like I can never get them to stand. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Um, Celestian or Jensen? Uh, Celestian for sure. Um, G12 H30 is one of my favorite speakers. The uh, um, Heritage ones. It's my. Those are I've, I've got one of those in the cab. Those are quite nice. Yeah, I, I usually test with those because I find they kind of work with anything. Like like any, any amp I've thrown at it works. Any pedal I've thrown at it works. It's sort of like it's probably not neutral sounding, but it seems neutral sounding. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Um, P nineties or humbuckers. Mm, humbuckers for sure um i'm actually sort of like noise averse because i use a lot of fuzz pedals and things like that um although i guess people usually say that humbuckers aren't great for <laughs> fuzz pedals but i don't know i find them to be fine um yeah um gibson or martin uh martin that's actually my only acoustic is uh um, well not my only acoustic but my main acoustic is a uh, auditorium model martin nice. very nice uh, a mahogany one yeah and last one are you a, a sneakers or a boots man oh definitely sneakers although i prefer barefoot <laughs> 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 if i can get away with it but yeah not outside obviously there you go all right that's that's what we have for the speed round there all right and that's pretty much it for the show guys okay all so, right thank you very much uh you know this is wonderful man yeah, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. You know, again, we're, we want to highlight, you know, people and companies and builders that are in our neck of the woods here up in the Northeast. And, you know, you're definitely uh, doing the right thing and putting out some good stuff. So thank you very much for that. Thanks. Yep, nice talking to you guys. All right, Christopher, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you.